Hello everybody and welcome back. On this week's video, I'm gonna show you how I make some lava scatter terrain. Now for this, I'm using some green infernal style lava, but you can use any color that you want. This is just gonna show you how to build up the structure to make this type of terrain. First things first, we're gonna take a bit of chipboard and we're gonna start shaping it up a little bit using a blade. You don't want it to be perfectly square. I'm also gonna bevel it up around the edges to help it sit flat on the table. Next up, I'm gonna use some of my scrap pink foam that I always have laying around. This one just happened to be cut up already kind of in one inch by one inch segments. But what I'm gonna do here is shave them down to roughly be in a cylinder or cone shape. I've broken them into pieces so that there are three different lengths, a very long length and then two smaller lengths that are gonna go around the larger pillar. So next we're going to make sure that they lay flat on our board um, and we're going to use some tacky glue here and just generously put it down here on the bottom and on the sides because you're sticking all three of these together and then down onto your chipboard and we're going to let this dry for a little while before we come back. I'm actually taking a pen here and just kind of visualizing where I'm going to have these pieces come out, where the lava flow is going to be. You don't have to do this, but if you're a visual person, this kind of helps you make an outline of where you're going to place all of your components to finally put the whole story together. using some cork board pieces here and I'm gonna rip them all up and you don't want any flat edges so make sure you tear off all the flat sides and just kind of put them wherever you see fit um, obviously you can see here I'm trying to go around my pillars and in all of the places that I'd already pre sketched out with my pen if you don't like the way that looks of course you can just kind of justify it any way you want to make it look how you expect it to look So once you have all of your pieces where you want them, once again, we're gonna break out the tacky glue and we're just going to glue each individual piece and then place it back where we had it. And then we're gonna let this whole thing dry for a little bit. You can use as much tacky glue as you really need to get the job done. There's no real rules to this. Just glue it, stick it, and move it around as needed and then let it dry. Now that the glue has been a few hours and it has dried in place, we're gonna break out the DOS Air Putty here. Now, this putty is pretty good. You can actually use a little bit of water to help make it a little bit more moldable. And off screen here, I occasionally dip my hand in some of it to help me mold this a little bit better. You're just gonna go around these three pillars as best you can, and you're gonna cover them entirely up. Now, technically, you don't have to use the foam at all. Uh, but it will reduce your drying time because you won't have a thick wall of this clay to dry. You can have a frame on the inside and it helps it stiffen up a little bit more. So I like to just build the interior frame before I go around and I start using the modeling clay. And you can see here, I'm just trying to smooth it out on the bottom to make it blend in as best I can here onto the base beneath it so that it'll look as seamless as possible. 
once this is all done, we're actually going to move on to the texturing phase. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take some modeling tools, and these have soft rubber tips on them. I'm going to dip it in a little bit of water here, and I am just going to start tracing through some of the lines, making uh, the holes at the top where the lava flow is going to come out. And you can just kind of circle it around, and it'll push around the putty a little bit so that you can have a cavern where the lava is coming out of. Something to note as well, I don't really have any modeling experience whatsoever. I'm just using the tools as best I can to get the effect that I desire. So I really don't model much at all. I'm just trying to imagine how this would look and use the tools I have to make it look that way. So with this tool, I'm actually breaking off part of that little crater that we created at the top, and I am scratching it slowly downward after dipping it in water, of course, to make the, the clay a little bit more malleable and I am making a texturized flow of where the lava is supposed to come out of and go down to. Now, going all the way around the piece, I'm gonna do a similar effect, and this is gonna create the little ridge lines that are on the lava tubes themselves. There's no magic trick to this. You just basically run this thing down across and split up those lines as best as possible. I'm going to use a second modeling tool. This one has more of a wedged shape to it, and I'm just going to trace the lines in between the three different lava tubes to help define them a little bit more so it doesn't look like just one large piece. You'll see three distinct lava tubes, and it'll be pretty obvious. All right, so that's going to take a little while to dry, but while it's drying, we can move on to the next step. That next step here is going to be to texture up some of our cork a little bit with earth texture. Um, I have this stuff from Vallejo. I've used it quite a lot. It makes a really nice basalt texture, and I think it's actually called basalt asphalt. Um, but this stuff works great. If you don't have access to this, you can actually make this very simply by using some um, some fine grain sand, some PVA glue, and some black paint and mix it all up and it should do the job just as well. What I'm doing here is I'm putting this all over the top layer of this cork and I'm being pretty generous with it. I don't want it to go onto the chipboard beneath it. It is only for the floating pieces of stone that are above the lava. Once this has pretty good coverage, I'm going to use my gloved finger and just kind of pat around the edges. And I'm not flattening it. What I'm doing is I'm patting it enough and pulling away so that it creates a nice textured surface. I'm just going to take out some of these little guys. Now these are just half pearls. They're used in jewelry creation kits and things like that. I actually learned this trick several years ago from Luke's APS. Uh, I'm sure you've heard of him. Uh, he showed this off in one of his videos for creating scatter, I think they were acid pools, and I thought these were great. I've used these so many times before. They're very cheap. Again, I'll have a link in the description below. And so what I'm doing here is I'm just peeling them off. They come in different sizes. I'm adding a little bit of glue to the bottom side, and I'm just placing them randomly all over. Of course, I have a very difficult time getting these things off of the sheet, especially since some of them are very, very tiny. So I am attempting to use tweezers here. Uh, just for reference, the tweezers did not work out nearly as well as I had hoped that they would. Uh, so if you can find a solution that works better than that, please, please, for the love of God, let me know what that is because both using my fingers and using different size tweezers has failed me miserably. But either way, I take each piece bit by bit, different sizes. You don't want too many large bubbles next to other large bubbles. Take the different sizes and make little clusters of them to represent bubbling lava. Once I'm satisfied with how I think it's going to look with all these little pearl bubbles, 
I'm going to let this dry overnight so that the model clay has a chance to dry it as an air dry clay so you can just leave it out overnight and it should be nice and firm. When it's done I'm going to add a little more bubbles to the top to all of the um, lava flow once it's dry. Glue it, let the glue dry and then I'm going to prime it up like you see here. And then I'm going to break out my airbrush and we're going to use a few different colors. The first one here is going to be our dark base layer and that's a scale color boreal green. Really, you can use any colors that you want for this. I chose greens, and so you're going to want to have a dark colored green, a mid-tone, a highlight, and then add in a little bit of extra white for that highlight. And I'll share all of those colors that I'm using to make this theme here as we go along and at the end of the video. I should also mention here that you don't need an airbrush to do this. I actually did another project and I used only brushes. So if you do not have an airbrush, don't worry about it. It just takes you a heck of a lot longer and the effect might be slightly different depending on how much time you're gonna put into it. But if you're using an airbrush, this is a nice, easy way to do it. Take your color, thin it down so it'll blow through the airbrush nice and clean. And you're going to go from the tops of these lava tubes where the bubbles are run it down in between all of the rocks and do your best to avoid actually getting it all over the rocks. Now it's okay to get it around the edges of those rocks a little bit because what that's going to do is give you a little bit of object source lighting and make it look like the lava is glowing and casting a soft green glow onto the rocks. But we're going to also do that once we're finished airbrushing the final highlights. We'll go around again and we'll add that lighting in. All right, that looks pretty good. So next up, I'm gonna take Game Colors Fluorescent Green, and you're not gonna clean out your airbrush, it's fine, you can just mix it in. It'll be a little bit darker because of the Boreal Green, but that's all right. You're bringing up your colors to give it more of a glowing effect. Now for this color, you're gonna kind of follow the same pattern, but you're gonna wanna stay away from the outer rim and the outer edges. You don't wanna fully cover up your boreal green that you just laid down. You want it to transition from dark green to the lighter green up to the final highlights. Once your second layer is done, you're gonna go ahead and add Game Color Liverly Green. Now this is a very bright yellowish green, and this is gonna be the first level of highlight that we're gonna use. So you're gonna use this all over the lava tubes, and you're gonna bring it up the lava flow that goes down the side, and you're really gonna target your bubbles for this because that's where a majority of your highlights are gonna be. It's gonna be in the deeper ends of the pools and around where all of those bubbles are. So you can kind of go crazy with this. And if you feel like you haven't been able to bring up the highlight as much, go to your other areas, work on those highlights, then come back and hit that spot again and it'll bring it up another level or two. You're also gonna notice here that my pinky is out while I'm spraying. It's because I'm very, very fancy like that and it will improve your airbrushing skills tremendously when you remember pinky's out. All right, now that's looking really good and you're starting to see the luminance here. The last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna mix a little of that Liverly Green with more game color dead white or any titanium white color that you have. This is gonna help you really bring out the true highlights and you're gonna focus a majority of this on all of your bubbles because the way bubbles typically hold pressure, they would get white near the top and burst, right? So we're gonna try to replicate that effect by spraying more toward the center and the top of those bubbles. You don't wanna go all over and cover your other highlights. Focus on just the top areas to really make them pop. No pun intended.
So right now I'm gonna reload the airbrush and we're still gonna have some of that highlight in there, but I'm gonna mix in a little bit of my fluorescent green and I'm gonna go around the edges of all of my stone. And this is where I'm gonna add a little bit of my object source lighting to make it look like those rocks are glowing a little bit. So now that we're done with the airbrushing, this piece actually looks pretty good as it is. You could leave it this way. However, what I wanna do next is go into a dry brush and add a little bit more visibility to the textures. So we're gonna take a white color here, a titanium white, uh, and we're gonna do a little bit of dry brushing over all of the dark areas. Again, you don't have to do this, but your piece really will be missing something if you don't pick out all of that nice texture. Contrast is very important on a piece like this. Those greens and blacks look great together, but the white will really give it some life. Per my usual style, I'm just going to get a little bit of white on my brush, wipe off as much of it as I can on my paper towel here, and I am just going to town on these pieces, trying to be as careful as I can not to go off of these black pieces and onto the base. We don't want to ruin any of the airbrushing we did with splatters of white. We're also going to be dry brushing the lava tubes themselves because remember we created some texture with the modeling tools earlier and those will also look very nice once you pick out those ridge lines with a little bit of white. You'll also want to go around the tops of those lava tubes being careful not to hit the tops of those little bubbles that you've put in there and make sure to pick out the rim of that lava pool that's at the top of each lava tube. All right, and so there you have it. I mean, this is a pretty completed piece. You can replicate this exact same style to make larger pieces, smaller pieces, whatever you want to do to make a complete set of this type of terrain. Here are the colors that I use to produce this. Uh, I will again have a list of them down in the description down below, but just for visual sake, I use these four colors to make this effect. Now, there are a few things that I did learn after doing this particular piece and a few mistakes that I would correct on the next pieces that I make. But again, this was an experiment and a learning experience for me as well. So I will point them out as firstly, wear gloves. There are a few little fingerprint smudges. They're kind of hard to see, but you won't have fingerprint smudges if you wear gloves when you're modeling the clay. Secondly, I would build the clay on top of a cork base to prevent the chipboard from warping or deforming a little bit after the clay has dried. And thirdly, I would definitely go back and smooth out the transition from where the lava tube touches the board. That way I don't have a weird ridge line that you can kind of see here. Really it's a minor detail, I can fix this up later or I can just learn from my mistakes and improve on my skill sets going forward. I really hope that you guys enjoy this piece and it's something that teaches you how quickly you can make this level of terrain. In all honesty, minus the drying time for the clay and the glue, there was about an hour of touch time at the table to create this one piece. So you could create an entire playset in a simple afternoon. Maybe a little bit longer if you're not using an airbrush and you're using a traditional brush, but if you have an airbrush, this is a half day project at best. I want to thank you all again for taking the time to check out my video. If you enjoyed this, please be sure to share it, give me a like and a subscribe. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below and I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you guys again and I will see you next time. Happy crafting.